Hi everyone, welcome back to a special comeback episode of Simpro Chats with Daz and Ads. Um, I'm Ads and my partner in crime is always... I'm Daz and uh, I'm from Platinum Consultants. Great to be here and uh, I'm looking forward to another exciting episode. Hopefully uh, not another 12 months till our next one. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, we're, we're back. We're making a special comeback. Um so thanks for persisting with us. Um, it's been a while since we've done one of these episodes for a variety of reasons. So obviously COVID has knocked the world um, on its backside. Um, we had a bit of time up our sleeves previously um, to be recording these sessions. And then COVID uh, started slowing down and we started picking up work again. And with the time difference, it started getting a little bit hard to do. and um, yeah, just a variety of different reasons, but we've made a commitment. We're going to start doing these episodes again, aren't we, Daz? We sure are. We yep. sure are. We're committed and um, hopefully we've got some good information for you today. And mm -hmm. given that it's been so long, we thought we might actually do an episode on what's changed since our last episode. <laughs> yep. Jeez, 12 months goes quickly, doesn't it, Ads? I know, man. We had a quick look at the last the last episode we actually recorded in relation to one of these, and it was like August last year. Can't believe it's been that long. So a lot has changed in, in Simpro in the last 12 months. So um, as Daz mentioned, we're going to do a bit of a recap. We're going to break the session up into two different... Um, Two different modules, I guess. Uh, we're going to be talking about Simpro Mobile as well as Simpro Enterprise. Um, so for whatever reason, we've just decided to start with mobile. Um, we've gone through the last 12 months worth of feature releases and kind of made a bit of a list of all the stuff that we wanted to chat about. So do you want to go first, Daz? What's, what's first on our list of goodies that Simpro Mobile has graced us with? I'd love to go first. We've got creating jobs in the service module. So for those who have been using uh, mobile for a fair while, um, you would have celebrated that release that you can actually create a new job. Uh, for those of you who are just starting, you would sort of think, how could you function without being able to create new jobs in the service module? So I was very happy when that came through. And, um, you know, some of the circumstances when you'd want to be creating jobs in the service module would be probably my number one would be after hours work. So mm. someone's on call, they get an after hours job, they need to create a new job in the system, not write it on paper or do something else. They can create a job themselves, of course, clock on and do all the rest. It's quite simple in the module, continue on as normal. Mm. I think we used to have creating job in that quote and sales module previously. So you had to jump in the quote and sales module which for starters, it would have had to have been enabled. Um, yep. Do it in there, close the job off, then jump into the service module, find the job, then clock into it, which was always a bit of a disjointed workflow. So I'm quite thankful that it is now in the service module. And it didn't always update. So when you when you just sync, it doesn't always show to you. And, you know, it was, you go from one module to the other and you got to wait for it to come. Uh, I also find the workflow in the service module to be a, just a little bit smoother, mm -hmm. not just because you're in the same module, but actually the fields that you fill in it just seems to be quicker. Yeah, totally. So that's job well done. Awesome. Um, next one we have is our push notifications. So the push notifications have, uh, was always a bit of a, a bugbear for the early adopters of Simpro Mobile, um, where you would have jobs scheduled to you, um, schedules removed, basically however it used to work in the Simpro Connect. Um, uh, thankfully, they've now been replicated in Simpro Mobile. So as you have a new job created and a new job scheduled to you, or as I mentioned, as the schedule has been removed from your run sheet, you are now getting push notifications, which you can tap on to then go into the, the run sheet. And it would kind of do a bit of an auto refresh as you acknowledge the notification and then show you your, your run sheet that's now sitting in the background. Yep. So... Um... The workaround used to be just have connect sort of installed in the background. Now you can uninstall connect. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably worth noting around this point is there's almost, there's a little asterisk there, almost nothing that you can't do now in mobile that you are able to do in connect mm -hmm. with the exception probably of tasks, I think is probably the last thing, a generic task area that's not related to a job. 
unfortunately that's yet to come but hopefully yeah. coming soon hopefully. everything else mm, everything uh, else should be good to go yeah i think that's pretty much it for push notifications they are what they are yep so uh reopen job button i might let you take that because uh your push notifications was shorter than my job creation yeah no worries um that's actually one of the handiest little um, introductions that they've put into Synchro Mobile, in my opinion. I think it's a really good one. Um, where this especially is hand, well, before I get into that, what it is, in the, the run sheet of Synchro Mobile, um, when you're the service module, there's now a little button in the top right-hand corner. So as you've checked into a job, if you double back into the run sheet, if you've got 10 jobs sitting in your run sheet and you can't remember which one you'd clicked on, there's now essentially a little button in the top right-hand corner of that run sheet, which looks like a little clock. Um, if you tap on that button, that will just navigate you directly back into the job that you checked into. Where this is especially handy and where this always was quite painful was if you had created a job in the background and you checked into it, if you then navigated out of the job because you hadn't had a finish time, it didn't hit your run sheet. So it was kind of like an invisible job open in the background that you could never access again unless you searched for it um, by using the search job function. Now that little reopen job button has kind of alleviated that and you can now navigate back into that job quite quickly and easily. Yep, very, very good. So the stock module is a fairly quick one. Essentially, it allows you to raise purchase orders to stock. So that wasn't available before. You could raise purchase orders from within a job but you weren't able to create stock orders. So that's been added now. Um, works just the same as it did in a job, but obviously to stock. Absolutely. So um, that's pretty much all there is. Yep. Yep. And just a, a, nice a, just a little thing with that one as well, just to make your life a little bit easier. Um, inside of Enterprise, ensure that you do link the appropriate storage device to the appropriate employee. So that way, when you are creating a purchase order in that stock module, it is actually adding stock into the right storage device. Yep. Good otherwise, tip. Otherwise, it could go anywhere. Who knows? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Good tip. I don't, know, I don't know where that would have gone otherwise. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if it just goes to the default uh, in the system, which would probably just be the workshop or warehouse every time. Yeah, which would kind of defeat the purpose of it. It would. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I might let you take this next one because I'm going to, um, I'm going to admit something right now, Daz. I didn't know this was a thing. I must have missed this update. And you just informed me that this existed about 10 minutes ago. So I'm going to let you explain this one. So uh, this is actually put in, um, well, about three to six months ago. I can't actually remember. But basically what happens is when you hit the phone number button, so you're going to call one of the contacts on a job, what actually happens in the log of the enterprise job is it actually registers that you've hit that button. So if you message them or if you call them, it puts a little log to say the technician called this number on this date at this time. What it doesn't know, it doesn't know if you actually hung up straight away or whatever, but it is keeping a record of, okay, he did try to contact the, the, the particular customer. He did try to um, send them a message. And that helps a little bit if a customer says, well, I, I never spoke to anyone. No one ever tried to call me. You can actually check back through the logs and, and see those calls. It's, you know, we can't prove that it was connected or something, but we can see that he at least attempted to call, which is great. I think it's a good little improvement. Um, it would be nice to see that in the activity timeline, which is kind of where you'd expect it to be. Uh, but at the moment, you got to click on the logs tab to see that. So that works quite well. Totes. Um, yeah. So does it keep track of the actual message that was sent or because it's happening in a separate app, like your yeah, message just, app, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to read that. Yeah. It's not able to read what was sent, unfortunately, um, or how long the phone call was for, mm -hmm. but uh, at least it knows that you attempted to. So that's a good start. And it would be the only way you could do those extra things would be to do a bit like Skype or whatever, where you actually make the phone call from within the Simpro app. Something yeah. that maybe could come some point down in the future. I've never heard of anyone talking about that, but that would be super awesome if you could do that. Yeah, that would be great. Even, even and I know this is a complete tangent, but it would even be really nice if you had like an instant messenger inside of the um, Simpro mobile app. So you could like um, send, you know, creep into someone's DMs, um, 
you know, one of the one of the other um, technicians. So you could actually absolutely back and forth or message the office and have like a little chat button in enterprise to mobile as well. That would be yeah. Cool. Team team messaging now that there's push notifications in enterprise for other things um, or, or push yeah screen pops. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be a really awesome thing is to have like a a, a team chat um, which you could be a member of. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Cool. I know. All right. Um, next one, I'll I'll quickly touch on because um, it's pretty pretty basic. Just viewing all contacts. So when you're inside of the the actual um, job, or you can even view them from outside of the job. So even when you're in the run sheet, you can tap on the little telephone button, and it will view all the contacts of that job. Not just the well, not just the customer contacts. It'll also show the salesperson. I think the project manager. Uh, you can make the phone call to the project manager or salesperson. It'll show the customer contacts, the site contacts, and also the job the job contact as well. So it gives the technician a, uh, a lot of variety. A variety can't talk. It's been a long day. Um, in terms of who they need to contact, um, and gives all the appropriate emails and, and telephone numbers. It's yep. a good little encouragement for everyone in the office to ensure that they're adding in all the details correctly inside of enterprise because you do know that technicians will be able to access them in the field. Yep, absolutely. So we get warnings now for licenses that are overdue. Mm. So it does display all licenses when there's any of them triggered. So you do have to scroll up and down to sort of have a look at which one it is that's actually overdue. It would be nice if it... A, displayed all licenses anyway. Mm -hmm. There should be a licenses button, in my opinion, so you can see your current list of licenses and when they're due to expire. And then all that would happen is when there's a warning, you'd get that little um, you know, triangle or alert symbol or something like that, or a number maybe to display how many are due to expire and probably highlight them in red. That would be fantastic, but mm -hmm. just good to see a warning now to anyone who's got a license that's overdue to the mobile app. Yeah, totally. I think it'd even be cool if inside of enterprise you could associate a attachment to a specific license so even if, better if you're on site and you use that license feature especially if you're using it for things like inductions and white cards and yellow cards and pink cards or whatever else they've got and it'd just be nice if they could just show the phone on there tap on the license show their their card or their license or whatever it is and then just kind of move on with your life so that way you could leverage it with inductions and, and whatnot. Yeah. So, and so. absolutely, that's a fantastic idea. And what you'd probably want it to do is you'd probably want it to download those licenses to the device mm -hmm. because there are circ certain circumstances where there, there's no service by the time they get there, but you still need to bring up, you know, your white card or your induction or your, you know, swims or like whatever it is that you've signed on to. And you want to be able to display that, but you can't if there's no service. So yeah. I would yeah. say they're good to download. And just use like that refresh or service data button to do an auto sync of any new licenses added in enterprise. Um, yep. Anyway, we're, we're, we're dreaming. So warnings are back. So we spoke about those guys. And the last one is tasks. So um, it's now introduced a, a little task module inside of the um, service module. So if you're inside of the service module and you scroll down to the bottom of the screen, you'll eventually see an area called um, job tasks that you can click on and see any tasks that have been assigned to you. Um, it is a very basic task function. Um, you can't create tasks. You can't assign tasks to other people. Essentially, what you're doing is you're just looking at the task and being able to complete it uh, and leaving notes against it. So very similar to what you'd be able to do in uh, Synchro Connect. I had hopes and dreams for the task module because I was hoping to be able to use it for things like variations. So if you're on site and you notice a variation, you could create a task and assign it to the PM to be able to alert them because we've now got notifications in enterprise. Hopefully that gets expanded a little bit in the future and we'll be able to do that. But at this stage, you're pretty much just completing tasks. Yeah, you can do a couple of extra things. So you can uh, put a percentage in mm -hmm. to say, you know, how what the percentage is of completion. Of course, you can type in your notes or whatever. But yeah, imagine if you could even take a photo into a task. I mean, that would be, they have attachments. It's just not something you can do from the mobile. That would be amazing. Yeah, it would be very cool. Um, all righty, Daz. So I reckon that's going to clock us off for part one of what's been released in Synchro Mobile since uh, we last caught up 12 months ago. Um, yep. So we'll be back for the next episode to go through the next seven or eight-ish features. Yep.
Sounds good. We've got some good ones coming up as well. And then uh, in a future episode, we'll also run through the enterprise features. So thank you everyone for watching so far. We hope you, uh, if you've missed any, like we may have missed a couple, uh, we've uh, triggered you to have a look and maybe even look a bit deeper to be able to use it, enable it in some cases, if you need to enable it. But uh, we look forward to seeing you on part two. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So thank you for joining in. Um, again, I'm Adam from AMAC Consulting. You can reach me at info at amac.consulting. And where can our lovely viewers um, catch you, Daz? So again, I'm Darren Whitby from Platinum Consultants. Uh, send an email to darren at platinumconsultants.com.au and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Looking forward to hearing from you. And as always, don't forget to send us some, some feedback on what you'd like to see, if anything we missed. Um, it'd be good to have an open discussion here on YouTube. Absolutely. All right. So until next time, we'll catch you then. See you then. Bye. Bye for now.